Hi, it's Penny Black and Jill Foster here with another PB&J card class. And this is another Paint With Me card class where I will be featuring some of Penny Black's newest stamps, creating one layer watercolor cards. So here is a look at the card that we will be creating today. I just love the bright pink of this image and sort of the looseness and fun of the underwater bubbles and watercolor scene. So the stamps that we will be using today are um, from our new transparent stamp sets, 30-845 Swimming By, as well as um, some of the sort of coral stamps from 30-847 Starfish Wishes. So these stamps are great. You can really mix and match the different images together. Now just a reminder, I will have a full supply list on screen at the end of the video. So if you want to check out any of the supplies in more detail, just hit pause and you can check it out at that time. So to do my painting, I'm going to be using Distress Ink Reinkers used as watercolors. So I'm just putting a little dab of these into a palette. You actually can use even less than that when you are painting. And I'll have all the colors used on this card and in my palette listed on screen at the very end of the video. So to start off, I did stamp my image using Memento Desert Sand ink, and I'm stamping onto Canson 140 pound watercolor paper. I find this ink is a perfect match with the Distress Ink reinkers to create a no line watercolor look in a very easy and simple way. Now you saw at the very beginning, I just painted on some water onto my paper, painting around that jellyfish image, and then I pounced on some of the colors from my palette and just sort of let that pretty heavy layer of water move those colors around. And I just wanted a very loose look here to create the look of underwater, of an underwater scene. Now don't feel like if you're creating an underwater scene that you have to completely cover the whole background in blue. That does look very beautiful, but if you're not wanting to do that, you can do like I'm doing here, just giving a hint of that bluish watercolor look up at the top or blue water <laughs> at the top and then some down at the bottom. And that will just naturally let the eye see that as being the whole scene underwater. Now I went ahead and dried that. And now I'm just gonna try my hand at painting some bubbles. I had never done this before, but it was actually pretty easy and I felt like it just gave more movement to this scene. I really wanted this to look, um, you know, like that jellyfish was swooshing across the card and underwater and bubbles and just all the life that you get underwater. So I am just getting a little bit darker color of paint, a little bit more of a blue. I'm just painting some circles on and leaving a little touch of a highlight in there. You can see they aren't even perfectly round. They really don't need to be perfect. Um, and as you add more to your scene, they will sort of stand out less. You could also do this if you weren't comfortable with painting these on, if you had some sequins. Uh, you could add those as embellishments and get really the same effect as painting on the bubbles. But I wanted just it all to look watercolored and so I went with painting for this scene. This is a standard size card, four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I really love using Distress Ink Reinkers as my watercolor. So it's not a true watercolor, it is actually painting with an ink. But I find that when I mix them with the stamping done in the Memento Desert Sand, that the desert sand inking or stamping really takes on the reinker color that is applied over the top. So one, it's very easy to see and two, it will sort of take on the color over the top, giving the look of a no line or hand painted look. Now to add to that movement, I'm going to splatter on some paint. So I'm just picking up some of that ink with a little bit of water and patting my paintbrush on there. I'm also going to pat that with my paper towel, just so those splatters aren't too dark. If you got any in places you don't want them, if you real quickly add water, you can pick them up. 
And I am kind of coloring up that jellyfish because I didn't want like, my luck is I always get like a giant blue splatter right in the middle of the image where I don't want it. So I'm just using a piece of scratch paper there to cover that up. And those will dry back just a little bit lighter too. But again, I think that just adds to the movement of the entire scene. And I am adding in some sort of yellows and greens here. And that adds more dimension to the look of that water rather than being just one flat color. I'm also going to add a touch of that to my little bubbles there. And then I can always go back with just water or even um, rinse off my brush and pat it dry on the napkin there that I have by my water and lift up some of the color with a thirsty brush, which is just a brush that's pretty dry that can sort of soak up some of the wet paint or water that's on your page. So here I'm going to come in now and work on this jellyfish. And you can see now how when I'm painting over like say those little dots that are at the top, they begin to take on that pink color that goes over the top. So I love that it looks like no line watercolor that I just painted this on. It's not a dark black outline, but I don't lose the detail of the stamp image itself and it's very easy to see while I'm painting it on. Now I will go back mixing and matching some different reds and pinks here till I'm happy with how vibrant this is. So you can see I started light. It's always easy to add more color, but it can be difficult to remove it. So I like to start light and then build it up and blend it a bit with water. I'm trying to remember to leave a little white space there a highlight and to keep some of the form of that top part of the fish. And I but I felt like I just left a little too much so I'm going to just go back in with a little water and even a little touch of some yellow in there. Now at this point I kind of felt like oh my goodness did I ruin this? by adding, by losing my highlights because I wanted to add in more color, but I'll show you here how you can add in a little bit more and fix that. I also felt like it went totally too red, so I grabbed the Pick Raspberry Distress Ink and added that to my palette, and I really felt like that helped things. So don't give up. You can just keep working and adding more color until you're happy with that. Now here I'm mixing a little bit of spun sugar with the picked raspberry just to give this a lighter look to paint underneath here. So this is fairly pale but it still ties into the colors used up at the top because I mixed in some of that picked raspberry with the spun sugar, the lighter pink color. I also will grab a little bit of that yellow while it's still wet and pat that in. And again, all of those exact colors will be listed on screen up at the end of the video. So I'm going to dry this before I move on to the next step. That way whatever color I add on top of it will help it um, not to bleed too much. I can stay within the lines as I paint these sort of tendrils or tentacles coming down. Now I'm using the silver black velvet paint brushes and again I have that listed in the supplies at the end but I have a variety of sizes so for example for this small detail I'm just using a very uh, just a smaller size not that extremely small but to paint that on. I'm not worried too much about doing too much shading with this because it is so detailed. I finished the rest of those and then here I'm going to go in and paint this in. And for me, this is when this really started to come to life. I love the whimsy of this image. And if you love to paint, but maybe your mojo is sort of failing you or you aren't as motivated to get into your craft room and make some cards, I really recommend giving 
a new type of image a try. So I really haven't done much with underwater scenes or fish or anything like that. And so I just thoroughly loved having these stamps to work with. It just felt like it brought a freshness and sort of rejuvenated my painting for me. So I painted on some of those small dots that were a part of that fish and now I'm going to come down here and work on sort of the kelp or coral. I am no expert on underwater anything but <laughs> we'll call it that. And I'm just doing this with some greens. Doing sort of one blade at a time and trying not to do the ones that touch or overlap until the one beneath has either naturally dried or I've dried it with my heat with my heat gun. This one in front I want just the uh, same color but lighter so there is less ink and a little bit more water on my paintbrush. And I went ahead and finished painting all those using the same technique. Now I've turned my paper upside down and I'm going to add in a little bit of this ocean water, some blue down here at the bottom. Now I didn't know I was going to do this and so if I had known that I would have definitely done this at the very beginning like I did up at the top. But sometimes you just don't know that when you're making a card. I don't make my cards ahead of time before I make the video and then remake them on the video. I'm just making it while this records. And so this is real life. This is me just deciding, oh, this definitely needs some hint of water down here. And so I went back to add it in. Now because of that, I did have to be careful not to let that water, that blue, touch too much on the green that I had already painted because it will bleed a little bit. Not too much of a big deal because if that a little bit of that green bleeds into the blue, it's just going to give it more of a turquoise look, which was totally fine with me. But it does take just a little bit more time here, especially here where I'm adding in the darker color, to paint around what was down there already. So I can sort of put that darker color in and then as I move out away there'll be less of that ink on my brush and it will blend into a lighter color. But like I said before, I do not need to go all the way up to the top. I can leave some white in there, which I think does add some life to the card instead of just this full solid blue and it's much easier. <laughs> You can see there where some of that green is bleeding a little bit out of the kelp, as we're calling it. And, um, but I think that's okay. I actually think that looks kind of good for an underwater look. And then just like I did above, I'm going to add a touch of green, a little touch of the yellow color in there just for some variety to that water. And then I'll dry that before my next step. So on this palette I have squeezed some gouache, titanium white. Gouache is more of an opaque paint. Uh, the more water you add, the more transparent it is. And if you use it right out of the tube, it is very opaque. So this was just dried on my palette. This is like my little white gouache palette. I like to have that handy. And I can go in now and just add some white, some details, some freshness up here on this fish. It gives it so much more life to add that white on there. I just love how that looked. I'm also going to splatter some of the white onto the background. Again, more of that sort of bubbly movement look to the background. Now this is right out of the tube and so it's going to go on even more similar to like an acrylic. You could even use an acrylic for this part 
and I wanted that to stay very opaque and very bright white so that's why I squeezed just a dab right out of the tube to use right away. Now once that dries on the palette I can go back and re-wet it and use it um, in more of a liquid form so you're never wasting it by just save whatever you've squeezed on um, you could even just have a regular paint palette to keep your gouache paints in. I just like to have a separate little one for just white, especially when the rest of my painting I'm doing with my reinkers. So here's a close-up look at that jellyfish and this card. And the finished card here is coming up. I hope you enjoyed today's Paint With Me video. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. That lets us know you enjoy this new content. And you can also connect with Penny Black on Facebook, Facebook, Pinterest, YouTube, here on YouTube, of course, Twitter, as well as Instagram, our website, and our blog. And all of those, including links to the stamps used today, are down in the description box below. And coming up here is that supply list as promised. Happy stamping!